Hey gang, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Get those eyeglasses off. We're catching Benny in the act. Hello. <laughs> He's actually taking on a neat little project. Let me show you this real quick here. You guys can see that or not. Let's see here. Let's get a... Uh, there we go. Some of you might remember this. The old snapper from the 60s. I remember that thing. Uh, well, Ben went ahead and traded a little labor hours for our neighbor who had this in her garage and hadn't been started for 30 years. Well, he got it started. He got it started, but then it still needed a little TLC. So he turned around and started looking on YouTube and he found a couple of videos that, you know, a couple of channels that actually uh, uh, do that kind of stuff. And so he's taken it upon himself to start tearing it apart and... Uh, Rehauling it a little, rehabbing it a little bit. So he's coming out to grab the compressor and and blow things out a little bit and clean it all up. And uh, I'm in here wrapping up a knife for Steve, Steve B. Matter of fact, that one other thing too. Look at that, brand new. Oh, let me flip you around. Boom! Look at that. Look at that little guy. Who's that? That's me. And there's Trip. Ah, CK knife and tool. Super cool. That is a nice little mural. Oh, yeah, she uh, she went ahead and she'd take the camera out and she would record a, a minute or so of her doing all the steps on that little mural, the little painting she did. It was pretty neat, you know. She she did the circle and then uh, she went ahead and she painted the mountains and then uh, she highlighted them and then did the trees and such and then put me and Trip on there and then uh, uh, she came back the other day and finished it all up by putting uh, this. She hand pencil drawn all the CK and the CK knife and tool, you know, knife and tool thing. And uh, the bummer about it is it's just plywood on, on the back of the cabinet there. And uh, the and landed right in the middle of a knot. <laughs> and like, oh, but she made it look really good. It's really, really cool. Uh, so very appreciative. I got some pretty creative kids. I'm feeling blessed about that. But they're getting old, guys. Man, they're getting old. Oh, now this is how it feels, doesn't it? All you parents. Oh, before you know it, you become an empty nester, huh? Boy. Oy, 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 oy. Oh, time flies. But hey, I'm in the shop. I'm working. I just finished up working on Steve's knife. Steve, if you remember, Gray Dodge Overland uh, 08. It's right over there. Gray Dodge 08 underscore Overland. Sorry again, Steve. I keep getting that all mixed up. Uh, but um, he did a, uh, He ordered a couple of knives for me in the past, a couple of Coyote Works knives. I met Steve out at the Coyote Works Overland Rally um, back uh, last year in 2019, uh, and he ordered himself a Coyote Pup and a Coyote Works 1.0. Uh, and then after he took possession of those two knives, he went ahead and ordered himself a Jasper. Uh, this Jasper was a little bit different than, uh, um, than his other two knives because this one was going to be considered his dress knife. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Steve picked out a Jasper, and he picked it out uh, with some really, really nice finishes. First off, it's nestled in a leather sheath I did myself, and he, it's a really dark brown, a rich dark brown, and it has uh, black and orange stitching. I did that chain stitch with his sheath. Um, black and orange with his dark brown, it is indicative to the beavers. Yes, he's an Oregon guy. He likes his beavers. So uh, I, <laughs> he wanted his sheath to look like that. Um, his knife, though, is anything but dull, I would say that. Uh, because Steve picked out not only the hand sanded satin finish, but he picked out this curly figured uh, stabilized koa, and then he wanted the carbon fiber liners down the side of it. And that carbon fiber just pops with that taper tang and that being hand sanded, super cool. And then a couple of nice little quarter inch decorative mosaic pins made from brass and nickel silver. Um, the Jasper, if many of you aren't aware, the Jasper is a nice little small. Uh, uh, I would I could say everyday carry, but not a lot of people carry fixed blade knives. Uh, what I like to look the Jasper as is more of a uh, a really nice go-to hunting knife. Uh, maybe a nice little knife to put on your backpack straps, uh, carry with you if you don't want a really big knife for something. It's really neat, but some people have opted to carry the Jasper as an actual everyday knife, uh, you know, what they, they like to carry that. And I have made several Jaspers in the past for people that wanted to do just that. Steve's no exception. Uh, the Jasper is made out of inch and a half by seven inch long, 
three sixteenths inch thick D2 steel. Uh, D2 is a semi stainless. It's a, considered a tool steel. Uh, it's a really good steel. I've had very good success with it. My, I was taught on it. it. Was the first knife I ever made was out of D2. Most guys they make knives out of 1085 and 1095 or maybe an 01. Uh, something like that. I started on t uh, the D2 and I've never looked back since. It's a perfect steel for overall use to be able to put an edge on it, retain the edge, uh, you know, field use and, and expediency and maintaining. It's, uh, it's a really nice steel. I like it. Uh, so Steve picked that out. Uh, again, uh, the taper tang, the koa, the, the carbon fiber liners, everything else. Super cool. I just got done doing videos and pictures and it's all oiled up. And once again, I use the butcher block oil here. Um, I'll try to maybe leave a link down below or something like that. I'm never good at doing that affiliate link stuff. Amazon, you know, we probably, so many of us buy from Amazon, but when I became an affiliate, the rules were different. And now you just don't get the money that Amazon promised you originally when you started it all. I, I swear I became an affiliate and then every month they had a change of rules and, and guidelines and all this other stuff and I kind of gave up on all that stuff. So if I remember at the editing of this or anything, I'll just try to throw a link down there, you know, whether you buy it through me or not, I don't know. They're like, it's like five bucks or something like that. So, uh, but it's butcher block oil, it's vitamin E enriched, it's food grade. Uh, so if you buy it for your knives, then you could also use it on your butcher block cutting boards and that kind of thing. So. Uh, but Steve, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm gonna get your knife all boxed up here. I got a, the tissue paper and everything, or the, the wrapping paper here and that. I'm gonna get your box going, and then I gotta get back cracking. I started on, um, I got uh, uh, three knives here. Two of these are gonna be Coyote Works knives. Uh, the Coyote Pup are what two of these are. Uh, then I have a Bush knife. So the two Coyote Works knives I'm working on is for Mac and for Robert, Robert, I already finished your 1.0, so I'm working on your 2.0, mail them all to you at the same time. Uh, Mac, I'm working on yours. And then uh, Travis, Travis, I'm working on your knife, which is also the Coyote work, the Coyote Pup shape. It's that same style, because uh, just like, I think Robert got the actual Coyote Works knife, but Mac and Travis opted to not do the Coyote Pup. They wanted that size knife but they got, went with different decorative pins. And uh, Travis got some really cool scales for his. And then Graham, I'm working on your bush knife, but I called you and left you a message because you didn't pick out your pins. I don't know what kind of pins you want. So I don't know what holes to drill for your knife tank. So I'm waiting on that. But uh, in the meantime, I've got one more of these to uh, uh, get going. And then once that's done, hopefully I'll hear from you, Graham, and I can get your bush knife started. Uh, but everybody else, I do appreciate it. Um, I mean, the summer's gone really fast. It's uh, can't believe it's over and done with. Kids are back to school again. Well, technically we started school. Uh, they started doing classes again at the end of August and into September. Uh, we started earlier. They had probably maybe six weeks off, four weeks off this whole summer, and they always had to do something every day. But um, as you saw, Ben's been keeping kind of busy too, and same with Ella. Uh, but everybody else, I do appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully I got some more news coming out shortly with the, uh, the wrapping up of 2020. Uh, yes, the books are closed. Uh, at the making of this video uh, in October, the books are no longer gonna be open for the rest of the year. Maybe I'll open it back up in December. I'm not sure yet. Depends on how everything goes. As well as I got a lot of other things I'm trying to work on and I, I'm super excited to share that with you all. Um, but until then, you all remember, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Keep me from the bottom of the YouTube bucket and we'll see you on the next video.